I'm a big fan of separating processing from effects. I like to do processing on a channel. Processing is things like EQ, saturation, distortion, compression, limiting, those kind of things. That for me, that's processing. Effects are things like definitely reverb and delay. Anything that's based on reverb and delay. So that includes chorus and uh, flanging and phasing and all of those other things are all based on very similar principles to reverb and they're not the same thing but they're based on similar principles so those kind of things tend to go in my effects returns and I like to have a couple of reverbs that are just available for everything just so very quickly uh, and there's an old sort of old school rule of uh, you know when you when when we were mixing um, bands and live live uh, live musicians, there's an old school rule for trying to get everybody in the same space together, and to a certain extent, I think that still applies with electronic music because it can sound rather weird if you start using lots and lots of different reverbs all on top of each other. I know a lot of people do it, and it can be done. But I do think that you've got to be cautious about that because it can also create mud. And what you really want to use reverb for is you want to use reverb for depth. Depth is obviously a 3D space. Uh, so reverb gives you your distance away from something. You've got EQ, which gives you your up and down in the frequency range you can eq something so it's lower you can eq something so it's higher you've got volume which gives it its its position and you've got pan which gives it its position in the stereo field and volume gives it its its level within the mix but reverb gives it distance it will you know if you turn something down that doesn't necessarily make it further away that just makes it quieter so you can use reverb in that way. So so that's a good thing to remember about reverb. 